what I'm going to be talking about today is how to enable education technology into our into our classroom. And I was talking to Matthew is that uh, if I, my prediction was following him, it would be great because I would, I'm just picking up where he left. I'm going to cover these four things. Uh, so I'm going to first talk about interactivity. Uh, we heard the word engagement a lot in in uh, in the first in the first uh, uh, session. People want their lecture to be engaging. Um, I'm going to just take it forward a little bit and add interactivity to it because that's how you can make it really engaging. Use of visual learning. This is what I'm going to talk about as well. And I'm going to give you an overview of two platforms which I have used in the last one year and what I have learned from it and why I feel it was very important for me to come here and talk to you about it because I want you to also become a participant and a co-participant with me in exploring these two tools. Then I'm going to talk about the subscription models because obviously these are not for free. So I'm going to give you an idea about that as well. Going back to the whole engagement idea. Either you are teaching a complex engineering principle or guiding a literary analysis or you are into architectural design. The goal is always the same. The goal is to engage our students more deeply and make our teaching more impactful. And as educators, the major biggest challenge we face is particularly when we are trying to teach complex or abstract concepts. And that is why we want our students to be active participants. And if you have been attending uh, the FDP, I have been attending the FDP for the last four years. And I can tell you for sure that Professor Awad loves Kahoot, for sure. Do you have one? <laughs> no. <laughs> I mean, so, so, so Kahoot is, is something which I absolutely love because it kind of builds up this whole energy. But somehow I have few comments. Always the front rows win in Professor Awad's uh, Kahoot quiz. Uh, but jokes apart, it's, it's really something that you can engage so well with the students. There's a competition. It's a fun quiz to begin with. Uh, all the scientists in this room and people who, uh, who teach science and maths would, would realize that p -hat is something which is used widely. Very, very good tool. Uh, Dr. Uday just told me that he uses it in his class and it's really helpful. It's free, of course, I did not know that. Uh, then you have uh, something for discussion, which is basically Padlet. I know a lot of faculty love to use Padlet in the classroom. It's amazing. Uh, it brings about a lot of discussion. There's multiple ways you can share. And if you have been attending any of Professor Lexi's lecture, then she loves uh, a Mentimeter. Again, another great way of, of, of holding quiz. Uh, and uh, it's quite versatile. And it has a lot more options than just holding a poll or actually making a, or, or doing a quiz. But my question actually goes beyond that. We f have figured how we can add interactivity to our classroom. My question is, how can this engagement continue beyond the classroom? During a lecture, we can use all these tools. Great. Job done. We can see that it actually works. But how can we extend this interactivity of the material outside the class? And that is the primary question that I am asking today. And for that, I want to first talk about the limitation. Now, we had some great exposure to the tools available on Blackboard. I got to know Blackboard when I joined EURAC. For me, it was a great change because the LMS I was using before was really bad. And I realized that all that you can do with LMS like Blackboard. It's great. They, they have fantastic tools where you can actually organize your content. Uh, but I still feel that there's something missing. I find the interactivity element missing in Blackboard. And I've been actually struggling to, to basically figure, and that is why you will see people getting out of Blackboard and trying tools like a Mentimeter. For the longest time, I was actually struggling to find a live poll during your lecture. Can we have a lecture where we have a live poll? Now, uh, if you use the full version of a Mentimeter, which I have spoken to the Professor Lexi, you can create the entire PPT in Mentimeter. So you're running one PPT and you're running a live poll with it. But otherwise, it's very difficult. right? I have looked at tools on, on, on basically Google uh, Slides where there's an option of adding live poll. So you will see like this a lot of limitations or challenges for the students as far as engaging with the course material is concerned. 
I mean, the latest update in Blackboard is great. You can actually embed videos and you can actually make a whole flow. Like imagine you taught the course and the student is engaging with the material all by themselves. Maybe somebody missed your class and all they have is the material on Blackboard. Can you make it an experience for them where they can engage with it, go through the material in a far more engaging manner? That is why I feel that no matter what, we, we, we might see better updates from Blackboard, but somehow I feel the material remains static. And, and when it comes to using learning management system outside the classroom. So, uh, interactivity makes an active learner from a passive recipient of information. It leads to better retention, deeper understanding, and obviously greater enthusiasm for the subject matter. I have tried uploading a PDF. I have tried to get the most uh, visual PDF that you can get and tell students, this is the material, please go through it. I still feel it's just a PDF. Even though you can actually have better ways to sharing documents on Blackboard, I still feel that it is just a PDF. What can we do with your PDF? How can we make a PDF engaging by itself? Can we think of building a scenario? I love actually seeing examples from School of Business, particularly with case studies, where they can have a different particular, a, a particular scenario, and the student can engage with the scenario much better. Can we have like a quiz while they're going through the material? If they can, in LMS, uh, in Blackboard, they can. But I still feel it's not visual enough. It's kind of, you go to the go to the quiz section and then start the quiz, and I somehow feel it is not enough visual to keep them excited. That made me to explore these two particular tools, Articulate Rice 360 and Thinglink. I came to both of them for separate reasons. I'll talk about that. Articulate Rice 360 allows you to build fully responsive interactive module that the students can learn at their own pace. They can explore content, take quizzes, and receive immediate feedback. The best part, you can integrate whatever you create in Articulate Rice 360 onto your Blackboard. This is something which I find the best thing about Articulate. Like whatever you create, you can just add it to your Blackboard. It will not even, it looks so seamless. I'll show you an example of that, that you won't even know it's been created in a different platform. Uh, I came to ThinkLink in a completely different objective. I was getting into immersive technology, thanks to uh, my dean in the last one and a half years. We've been trying to get into the immersive space. Uh, we got the 360 camera, so I started engaging with those content. I was finding it very difficult to stitch them together. So I was looking for a platform, looking for a tool. Uh, most of them had very steep uh, learning curves. I wanted to do something that our students can quickly learn. And that I experimented with a lot of platforms and finally I realized ThinkLink is possibly the best. And then I realized it's not only for people with media production skills. Everybody can actually use it. And uh, I will talk about it when I talk about its features in the, in the coming slides. So let's go through what Articulate can do for you, yeah? So the first thing I'm gonna talk about is micro learning unit. So micro learning unit are very, very powerful way to actually create and package content into manageable interactive segments that the students can engage on their own time. So imagine you have, you're teaching a course and you want to break up a small component of the course and you want the students to start engaging with them even before you start teaching them, for example. So I was talking to Professor Lindsay from School of Business last year uh, in uh, spring, and uh, she wanted to teach change management in her undergraduate and graduate programs. And she felt that this is something which students can learn on their own. I have all the materials, I have all the videos. Can I do something like that? So we created a micro learning unit for change management, and she actually ran it during the course, and she took feedback from the students and actually we got very interesting results. This is something which is there on your blackboard from day one. The students can do it at their own time and you will get all the tracking information of how long were they in that material, uh, did they attempt all the, all the questions in the quiz and so and so forth. To give you an example of how it looks like, this is how it looks like. Uh, this is the module uh, from change management that we created for the students of School of Business undergraduate and uh, graduate programs. Uh, we try to maintain the look of AURAC, so we took every design element Hello. of the AURAC. Uh, I'm Dr. Lindsay Kemp, Professor of Management at the American University of Ras Al Khaimah, which is located in the United Arab Emirates. 
So you can, so we edit videos which basically introduce the students to the whole, whole, whole uh, module. We put in interactive ways to go through the material and uh, this, is, this, this is a way of how you can go through each particular module. And it has knowledge checks in the middle so people can test what they have learned so far. And we did that and it was a very basic attempt. We did not go all guns, but it truly paid the results that we wanted. I mean, in one of the studies uh, in, the, in the Journal of Applied Psychology, micro learning is shown to have improved retention by 80% compared to traditional learning methods. So it definitely works. So what we've done, actually, we used the data we collected from our students. We actually uh, presented the paper in a conference, and uh, we got great feedback. And right now, we are planning to get it published. So this is already uh, the full paper is available in this journal as a conference proceedings. So going forward, I myself uh, teach a course during summers. And I have a module which is on creating video essay. Now, I get students from all over the board. I get students from engineering, biotechnology. How do I teach them some basic media skills? These are not media students. So I created this module, and it was available for them from day one of summer. They can go through it. It is a step-by-step -step way in shooting, editing video essays. And I told them, you have eight weeks. I mean, in summers, it's actually two weeks. You have two weeks to go through this, get yourself familiar with the whole process. So when we reach the point where you have to create an essay, it will be very easy for you. So I kind of prepared them as I was going through the theoretical uh, uh, components. And you can see, you can design it the way you want it. You can have different kinds of material, videos, all of it. So all this was running from the blackboard. And I'll show you in, in the next few slides where how I, was how I made it available inside the blackboard. So what Articulate 360 can do is that it can really make your content more engaging and interactive. And here the interactivity is just not like a buzzword. I'm not using it like a buzzword. It's a fundamental shift in the way we design learning experiences. Instead of delivering information, we are enabling learners to engage with the content and at their own pace. Articulate 360 provides you with a variety of tools. I mean, there's a whole Whole, I can conduct another lecture just by going through all the tools, but I want to pick out some of the interesting ones so that you get excited and you would love to use them. The first tool is accordion tool. I'm sure you must have seen it before. It's a very simple tool, particularly you must have seen this when you have gone through websites with FAQs. So whenever you have a step-by-step -step, uh, kind of a process where you have detailed explanation, but you want to not overburden the student with all the information, then you can actually use this particular tool. And uh, the best part is that this tool also allows you to uh, go from an accordion tool into an accordion tab. So you can change it with a, with, a, with a click of a button, as you can see. Now the accordion tool has been transformed into an accordion tab. All this is very simple. I have used it. I know like I am a, uh, in terms of design and media production, I'm more, uh, more ahead. Uh, but I can tell you it is a very, very simple interface. Easier than Blackboard, for sure. So the next tool I'm going to talk about is the best part of, of, uh, of Articulate 360. It's called Interactive Labeled Graphic. Take any image and transform it into a great learning tool. So what, it, what does it do? It, it, lets you, it lets the learner interact with the image. You can create some hotspots and you can add more details. The details could be text. The details could be also audio, audio commentary, which means Imagine you have a scientific model, you put the image of scientific model, and then there are different components you want students to learn from, you add a hotspot, and then you record your, record your own commentary. So as they click, they hear you talking about a particular model, a particular component. So you can add text, you can add videos, you can add your own audio commentary. Basically, you can transform any dull looking graphics into an interactive uh, element where you can teach different things to your students. So it applies for flow charts. Like I was talking to Professor Awad regarding uh, having a flow chart for academic progress. He spoke about the academic uh, uh, probation policy. When you look at the flow chart, you feel that, OK, if I, if I hear his voice reassuring me as advisor and explaining to me, OK, what happens when you're here? So imagine a flow chart like that. And I added a, I add a hotspot at each 
each point where I need some explanation. And you click on it and you hear Professor Awad saying, hey, you know what, this is the point where a student is in provision two, and this is what he should do. So just a simple looking flowchart. Now we have added interactivity and, in, and, and we have added a lot more information than just the graphic. So this idea is taken over by ThinkLink and you know, taken to a different level, I'll talk about that. But they also have something, something similar. It's not limited to graphics, it's limited to videos, 360 videos, 360 pictures. The next tool is uh, flashcards. I'm sure you must be familiar with this. Uh, great for uh, trying to teach the students by reinforcing, uh, reinforcing learning through repetition. So any kind of memory retention that you want students to do, you can use flashcards, very easy to use. You can again add pictures, videos, whatever you want. And uh, you can also convert a lot of flashcards into a flashcard block, something like this. So uh, it, by default, it gives you three. But you can, if you have more than three, it becomes, you can make it like a block. So that's flashcard blocks. Very interesting, very helpful for the learners. Uh, the next tool is process block. Now, I know many of you here uh, will definitely use it. If you're teaching software, any kind of software, and you want students to just go through step by step what they should do, you can actually use a process block. You can have an introduction text, and then you can have different slides basically within it. I have used it for teaching softwares where I actually added a GIF image. You know, like a GIF image is like a small animation. So it shows the mouse going somewhere and clicking and what it does for you basically. And I added those, it takes time, it's time consuming, but honestly, when you make a video, and I have done that, I made a video of like 30 minutes, and nobody would watch that video, but at the same time, they might want to know, okay, what happens if I click here? Okay, go to this particular process block, and it's a simple step-by-step -step process, and you can add images, GIF, GIF images, add your, audio, add your audio commentary, add videos if you want. Basically, it teaches the students to go from one particular process within one particular process for the different steps. And uh, great for uh, uh, business course where it can be used to explain strategic planning process. Um, it can be used across the board for engineering as well. Wherever you want the students to understand one process, you can use a process block. Now, I'm sure you're interested in assessment. So, so Articulate has informal and formal. When it comes to formal assessment, you can actually create a graded quiz. You have uh, options between multiple choice check boxes in terms of your in terms of your choices. Fill in the blanks. So there's a whole lot of different uh, options available in creating a graded quiz. Um, again, as I mentioned to you, you can track it, which means you can add it to your blog, to your blackboard, and you will be able to see how many students have actually done well in your quiz. There's also something called informal assessment, and in that you have the knowledge check, which means as you are going through the material, in between the material you can add some quiz. These are not graded, it's just to check the students how they have done well, and then you can let them go to the next stage. So until unless they clear all the questions, they cannot move to the next stage. So that's basically for knowledge check. Also has an option of adding question bank. You might be having a big class, and you want to, want to mix the questions from, your quiz, uh, from the question bank, for multiple different different sections, so you can do that as well. This is a demonstration of all of it that is available in terms of adding quiz on uh, using Articulate. So this is an example of a graded quiz. how it looks like if you're doing a, 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 a knowledge check is different from a graded quiz where you can add the quiz in between your material uh, again this is not graded I love this whole uh, uh, matching uh, tool I think it can be very helpful uh, so this is how it works you can have so here people are, are engaging with your content they are picking something up and trying to put it on the right option and I think this kind, of, this kind of ways to engage the students with the quiz can be really helpful. So this is some examples of how the uh, grading and the assessment can be used in Articulate.
So I was talk, telling you about how you can integrate and articulate whatever you create, like a micro learning unit or a full course with Blackboard. Uh, this is an example. I teach this course called Reading Image and Film. I get students from all over the board, from biotechnology, from, and this, I, I usually teach this course during summers. This is how it looks like. So this is a module I created in Articulate. If you click on it, it opens this interface. This is the course that I had designed. Uh, again, it's focused on teaching students how to create a video essay. You can see that I have different kind of different kind of units. Each unit has got different material. I have videos which I have recorded uh, basically beforehand, and this is how it works. It's as simple as that. You can create something and you can integrate into your blackboard. Yeah. Just two quick questions. Is this blackboard for free? Yeah, I will come to it at the last slide. And what about copyright? How does it deal? Does it have a copyright policy when you upload? Uh, so uh, I have uh, I have uploaded embedded videos, so which means they are still coming from YouTube. So you're not downloading a video and then basically putting it in your own uh, platform. You are using embedded video, which are openly licensed from the YouTube license. So it's fine, and and you can use any any amount of embedded video if you want, and that really helps sometimes because you have some great material which is lying on YouTube and you want to use that to teach your students a particular process. I think it's really helpful that it allows you to use embedded video. Yeah. Thank you for the question. So uh, that's basically as far as Articulate is concerned. I'm going to move towards ThinkLink now. So as I mentioned to you, ThinkLink is something which I really wanted to work with 360 uh, images and 360 videos. Was finding it very difficult to find a platform which is light. When I say light, it means cloud-based, which means I can upload something on a cloud. It will stay on the cloud. My computer space it doesn't matter how much space do I have. What is the processing power that I, that I have? But I found a lot more that the thinking can do. So when, so this is uh, thanks to the Office of Research and Computer Service, I got a seed grant from uh, Bin, Bin Rashid Smart Learning, and I used that fund. Uh, but I overestimated. Uh, it was a, it was not enough for my subscription. So I could mostly explore, but not really create anything. Uh, so I got in touch with the thinking team, saying, you know what, I have created all this. They went through what I created. They like what I created, and they said, you know what, I'm going to give you. Uh, for three months, full plan. So I so I've been talking to them over summer, and they gave me a full plan. I have a capacity for adding up to 500 students and more faculty from different schools. So please uh, pay attention. I mean, I would love to have a collaboration from different schools so that we can work on this platform together. And I'm going to tell you what amazing things it can do. So let me first focus on what are the different features of thinking. If you are from architecture and you deal with a lot of 3D models, if you are from engineering and you teach your students a lot of 3D models, amazing way you can add them into thinking. I was working with, I was discussing with, uh, with different, different faculty from different disciplines and uh, you know, I realized that a lot of faculty, they want to try out tools uh, which they might not be familiar with. For example, I worked with Professor Uday because he had an idea of making his chemistry lab interactive so I use a particular platform, send my students, took pictures, and we have created interactive features, a 360 image of the lab. You can, you can like turn around the image and you can click on a particular instrument and it will give you information of what the instrument is. So it really has this opportunity for creating interactive experience. You can also watch all of this using an Oculus. So if you have like an immersive device, you can actually use that as well. But you can use it also on your phone, on your laptop as well. So, it allows you to add different variety of multimedia content using tags. So I'm going to show you some examples of how you can add a 3D model using Articulate Licensing. And again, this can be integrated to your Blackboard. It has LTI connection, which means you can actually uh, add it to your Blackboard as well. These are some examples of adapting 3D models. The first example is of a BMW car. So if you have a BMW car, for example, as a model, and you can add those, can you see those, uh, can you see those hotspots? You can add in information. So you can import a 3D model and you can add, imagine if you're teaching this to an architecture student and you are showing them different models and want to teach them more with the model itself. The second example is of an armchair and you can have, uh, you can also have, by the way, audio recording and link to a website if you want. So there's a multiple ways you can use those tags. Uh, the final one is of a food mixer. Uh, here you can also add videos from YouTube. So every hotspot will take you to a different uh, uh, point. It can give you text information, or it can also play a video for you. 
So, adding multimedia content is very easy as far as uh, you know, adding, adding a 3D model is concerned. So, imagine the possibilities that you have with the things that you teach. Uh, virtual tour. Uh, this is again something which I find uh, you might I might know. Lots of lots of campuses for marketing. They create a virtual tour of the campus. Very helpful. Uh, but this can just go a, a lot more in depth than just having maps. This is a map they've created where they have tagged uh, their students from different parts of the country, and you can just see the diversity of students they have from different countries. So. A virtual tool can be very, very interesting because you can add different forms of media. This is an example of a campus. So uh, you get a campus tool using the virtual tour option. When you click on it, you have options of having a tour guide who will speak over the, over the interface. Or you can go straight to a 360 picture. This is a, this is a 360 image. And when you click on it, um, I'm going to the next one. So when you click on the 360 view, you not only get the 360, but you also get uh, things that you can you can add tags here and they will give you more information about each element within the lab so that's basically a virtual tool you can create a virtual tool uh, on uh, any video any video you have so I teach film appreciation I teach students to go through video and learn something from the video suppose I want to talk about a film analysis I want to pick up a specific scene and talk about it I can add an interactive point so people will watch the video and then they will see a dot somewhere and they will click on it. The video will stop. I can add my commentary. I can say this is the significance of this particular point in the film, right? So any video you can make it interactive. Now I have tried doing this in the standard way, okay? It's a lot of uh, new software that you have to download, get licensed, learn how to do it. This you can do it with a click on the cloud. So anything that you have with you, image, videos, 360 photographs, 360 videos, you can make them interactive. So if you're teaching a science course, you can use interactive tags to explain complex concepts. If you're in the marketing or in communication, you can use this feature, show advertisements and different forms of media, and then you can offer deeper insights for questions for discussion. Uh, then you have the 360 photographs. I have explained to you this before in the very beginning. This is a 360 photograph and you can add videos to your photographs. And this is actually a video, a short video and then you can see this is a 360 video, people are actually moving in the video. And you can, so imagine you have a lab and you want to explain to your students what is in your lab. So I am very thankful to Professor Sijo and Professor uh, uh, Rawad. Uh, uh, they actually, we actually already did something like this. Uh, last term, I actually shot a series of videos uh, with with Professor Awad and uh, with, 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 with Dr. 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 Siju, and we actually have covered the cell culture lab. Uh, although my ambitions were a little bit uh, bigger, I wanted to actually do a, c uh, a scenario builder, which I did not have access to with my subscription. Now I do, so I'm definitely going to explore that. You can build a scenario, which means you can have the video go through a particular flowchart and branch out into other sections as well. So I did that with School of Business, one video we did on leadership skills with Professor Lindsay. It was amazing. They have added some new feature on augmented reality. So this is a very exciting field. So if you're having any online exhibition, you can add information. Suppose I want to create an AR experience. So all you have to do is, I'll give you a QR link, open your phone, and you can roam around this whole auditorium, and you'll find a touch points where you can move your phone and you'll see information. It, it, it might bring life to an image, it might start a video for you, for example. So great for exhibitions, where you can add additional information while the, uh, while the person is interacting it in the, in the physical space. So uh, ThingLink have also started uh, AR, which is really amazing, as an addition uh, to their existing, uh, ex existing tools. So scenario, great for a management school, great for any kind of scientific uh, kind of explanation where you want the students to go through a particular path and then make a mistake and come back and start again. Um, a virtual tool might not be very great for a faculty here, but maybe the marketing can use it to showcase specific locations of the campus 
and I'm definitely looking at uh, using AR in our next uh, media conference or, or media event that we organize uh, in our school. So, great, or great, great uh, options there. Now let's talk about money. I mean, uh, very valid question. How much does it cost? So, uh, I got the first subscription for Articulate through one of the seed grants. Uh, I exhausted it, so it got over. And I mean, we, we really spend the money well, by the way. So we created a whole process for onboarding for HR. Um, so if you are a new faculty in URAC, uh, you will be run through an entire onboarding process, which I created with our students. So it's an HR onboarding process. We created that on Articulate. Um, I created multiple courses which I used. Uh, you saw the example of the change management, which we created on Articulate. And right now, with our students, uh, with, with mass communication students, we are working with, with Matthew and Professor Awad in actually creating an articulate course material for Unit 100. So this is something which I have taken very seriously and I can see the potential. And the very reason of, 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 of being given this platform is to canvas for support, canvas for participation. So again, my request is that uh, this, I think, every faculty can use. It's very simple to use. It does not require any technical competency. And I mentioned it's easier than Blackboard. And uh, you can make your course material come to life, basically, with this particular plan. Uh, for ThinkLink, uh, this is a quote I got from them. So as I mentioned, I've been talking to them over a uh, over few, few months now. So if I get one faculty from engineering, one faculty from architecture, one faculty from school of business, at least in fall, uh, you know, you guys can actually create something and run it with your students and see how it goes. I know of different schools speaking with external vendors for adding interactive 360. It's super expensive. Um, if you have already spoken to some vendors and you've got the cost, I know. I've also sp uh, we have also spoken to a few vendors. We wanted to do something for forensic science. Um, again, 360 image and 360 video is a little bit difficult. I'm right now shooting my lecture with a 360 camera. This is a consumer level camera. When I bought it, it was not, not a consumer level. I see a lot of people roaming around with this camera now. Uh, so two years back when we bought it, it was not consumer level. Now it is a consumer level. So it's definitely getting easier, definitely getting better, definitely getting cheaper. But it, there's a learning curve to it. So when it comes to 360 images and 360 videos, I can help you with that. But as I showed you already, you can import your existing 3D models. You can convert any image into an interactive graphic. You can add videos, information, whatsoever. So I'll be more than happy to uh, collaborate with different faculties from different schools in adding you to my existing ThinkLink plan. And we can try all this during fall. And then uh, we, can, we can show the results to our uh, leadership. And hopefully, we could get some kind of subscription by the end of fall. Something to think about, yeah. So that's that's basically uh, what I wanted to talk about and ignite this basic discussion. Uh, yeah. So this is like something that can be shared publicly and for free. Yes. Right? Yes. After yes. You yes. The yes. Once you get the product, you can you can uh, uh, share a link with your students externally. You can also limit it within Blackboard. So you create export a package and then uh, you can import it on Blackboard. So that's up to you. Whatever you want to do with the with the material. Yeah, so uh, that's all from my side. Thank you so much for being uh, a good audience. And, uh, any questions of the good kind can please.